Laba. Um, I'm an independent artist. I uh, was born in Trinidad and Tobago. I now reside in New York City. My mom brought me here at the age of 10, and it was the greatest moment in my life. It was November, and it was cold. I right, just remember coming home, coming to this place, like, why my mom's bring me to this cold-ass place? And I've been loving it ever since, man. Living the American dream, baby. I didn't start actually getting into rap until I heard the DOC. You know, um, he was an artist from Texas that was down with NWA. I was a fan of that. I was a fan of the, the Tribe Called Quest. I was a fan of Marv Deep. I was a fan of those people. So I, I had a great exp learning experience on how to make records. So by the time I started rapping, by the time the NWA era uh, came, came around and I was able to come out of my mother's house, that's when I really started rapping. From learning from, from Mob Deep and Tribe and all of those guys, and the NWA era came in, the great thing that they brought into my life in hip hop, Eric White bought entrepreneurship. Like, he was the first guy who said, yo, I'm a CEO, we are owners. I had to go find out what that was. I had to, I had to know, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what a CEO was. I didn't know, um, he would use words like, yo, we distribute our records for ourselves. Uh, we go to the swap meet for ourselves. I, I didn't know what that was. So the great thing about those men into my life, they bought entrepreneurship, leadership, and it is the great escape. I'm, I'm still trying to fucking escape now. <laughs> the first rap I actually really wrote, that first, that first black ass shit, horrific, huh? And I went and recorded him, I paid 60 bucks in Canarsie. Eddie brought me to the studio and he introduced me to Mark Pitts. Mark Pitts introduced me to Biggie and that's where I learned how to really make records being around those guys, you know what I'm saying? I keep the West Indian, the Caribbean twang. It separates me from them. I wanna be, uh, I wanna be an I am. I, I, what separates me from them is because I'm selling my culture. I'm, I'm just as bad as as the other person coming from the other country that wants the American dream. You know what I'm saying? Some people believe it ain't here, but there's people coming here right now that are saying it's here. So if I don't sell my culture and I don't sell where I'm from, I'm just stuck in a, a bucket with a bunch of the same thing. So, nah, I'm gonna sell my culture till I die, man. I think I'm a flagpole for Trinidad on a bigger scale because I still sell my country and my music. I never forgot it. I, even if I had been there and things changed, it makes me different. You know what I'm saying? It makes me different. What I don't respect is business. You know what I'm saying? But as for all of the artists, look, before my Twitter page was at 10K and all that, my Twitter page was like 586 followers. Soldier Boy, Went up on, on MTV Rap Fix and was like, yo, Lava, that record is swag. That's all he said. He didn't say I was the dopest rapper. He didn't say I was the fucking cannons was blazing. All he said was, Lava, this is West Indian swag. And in three days, it was 11,000, 11,000, no, 10,300. So some type of event has to happen and if social media is your gateway, that is the gateway. It don't turn you into a celebrity, but it can turn you into a guy. If you go outside, you know, people are gonna know who you are if you're doing something. So, you know, that was the biggest change, you know? You know, but, you know, you're born poor. I was born poor. I wasn't born with a platinum spoon in my mouth. Uh, like I said, I had no great investors. I was cool. I enjoyed the, the hardship of it. Now I can say, yo, I'm a CFO of mine, you know? I'm a co-founder of, and that's a great fucking thing, man. Go to school and, and get a regular job, stay out of trouble, and just, just, just give away your music. Just give it away before you deal into retail. Let somebody see that you about giving something away to your neighbor and you invested in yourself. It'll be a little bit more better. And invest in yourself, you know, go to the studio and get your stuff, give it to your neighbors, give, let the world know, give it to the world, you know, share it with the people, you know, um, you 
can't get into retail unless you know your value. That's where um, most artists fail. The failure is they think that they can retail themselves to the world. Nah, most great men took great losses. They gave away a lot to, you know, be wealthy. And I learned that in the history of great men, so. Somebody has to tell you your shit is whack. Somebody has to tell you, you know, yo, you need to go again, you know? So you get a couple of those, take a couple of losses, you know, you get your wins, you'll be good. Ladies and gentlemen, we some winners, some motherfucking monsters, true born sinners. Moms get mad cause we date these blonde women. Date them on the OGs for coke and crack pitching. A mission when special ed had the bitches. Hold check JC up in Rudd building. A villain, special ed had the women. When Hold check JC up in Rudd building. Drug dealing, coke dealer business. I'ma make my money, have billions to the ceiling, but fuck it. It's our turn to jack the torches, exile the bosses, decapitate the council. Fucking make the world denounce them, then bloody up their council. I'm six big, six pox, and six puns. I'm a brand new Diablo coming out of Oslo. <laughs> L-A-B-B-A at Twitter, at Laba, uh, Laba Rebel Music, spelled with a Z on Facebook, but I'm always on Twitter tweeting.